are thought to be spiritual beings that radiate an incredible light and bring forth blessings and wisdom, the archangels in both scripture and the greater world are some of the most compelling and yet equally elusive characters. Each archangel appears to represent a certain attribute and be responsible for fulfilling certain missions for God, as well as serving as a chief to all other angels in the heavenly court. Often they are seen in scripture, at least in the cases of the more famous Michael and Gabriel, to be helping humanity and bringing them glimpses of God's ultimate plan so that they might better serve him. Many today believe that archangels appear to different people, regardless of their faith, and that they can appear at any time and in any place. Often the Bible implies the archangels are fearsome to gaze upon, or at least bring shock to those who witness them, given that those who see them are overcome with emotion and fear. But many also believe the archangels are beings of light and unconditional love, who bring calmness and soothing to those they visit. But perhaps there is one archangel who is less likely to visit, given his lack of mention in the Bible and across most religious texts. He's an archangel who seems to take a back seat to the more commonly mentioned Michael, Gabriel and even Raphael. But still there exist some rather interesting accounts of the archangel known simply as Uriel. Whilst the other archangels are more rooted in their roles, Uriel doesn't appear to be responsible for anything out of the ordinary. We know Michael is a warrior thought to repel demons like he did in Revelations against Lucifer, and that Gabriel is a messenger delivering the word of God to Zachariah and to the Virgin Mary. We can even associate Raphael to being a slayer of demons, and that he defeats Asmodeus in the Book of Tobit, and is seen to take on Azazel in the Book of Enoch. Uriel though is somewhat marginalised in this area, and certainly does not share the same glory as his fellow archangels. We understand that he represents arts and science, and perhaps this is why we don't often see him in the thick of things. Interestingly though, in a pseudepigraphal book known as the Testament of Solomon, Archangel Uriel is thought to be the third archangel, and takes the place of Raphael. His name, which is thought to mean God is my light, infers that like the other archangels, Uriel serves to remind humankind that it is not he who should be worshipped, but God, for he is an extension of the Lord. Perhaps the main mention of Uriel takes place in the apocryphal book known as the Second Book of Esdras. It is thought to have been written by Ezra, a scribe and priest of the 5th century, before the Common Era. The first two chapters of this particular book focus on a long monologue by God, condemning the Israelites for not being thankful for him, for giving them all that he had given and goes on to say how he intends to forsake them. The second chapter sees Ezra having a vision of Jesus Christ, and learns here from an angel that those that stay loyal to God will be crowned and receive the greatest of blessings. Ezra is also tasked by God to preach his word to the Israelites, letting them know how angry he is with them, but that those that are repentant will be shown mercy. By the third chapter all the way to the 14th chapter, things start to get a little more interesting. This section of the second book of Esdras, otherwise titled The Jewish Apocalypse of Ezra, consists of seven visions that Ezra experiences, all of which are revealed and detailed to him by the archangel Uriel. Ezra tells us that he is in Babylon, and that he becomes troubled by certain thoughts he is having pertaining to the desolation of Sion and the wealth inherited by the Babylonians. He becomes anxious and confused at these thoughts, so much so that he puts in a long-winded prayer to God detailing that those repentant of the Israelites still suffer, that their labours have no fruit, that the men of Babylon have taken their land, that many children are dying, and that many of them are suffering. Meanwhile, the Babylonians and the enemies grow stronger, wealthier, and grow in every other aspect, despite worshipping false gods and subjugating the Israelites to such horrors. The fourth chapter sees Ezra receive an answer from God in the form of the archangel Uriel, Ezra tells us, And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer, and said, Thy heart hath gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High. What he essentially goes on to tell him here is that Ezra cannot possibly even begin to fathom the will of God, and so ponder though he may, he will never be able to suss out the plan of God. He tells him that there is a higher level of consciousness, 
that man cannot meet, and therefore he cannot know why God is doing the things he is doing. While it may seem like an injustice that the Israelites who are God-fearing are suffering whilst the enemies are thriving, Uriel implies that it is no injustice at all, and that this is simply God's intention, because as the age-old saying goes, God works in mysterious ways. He gives a similar answer that God gives Job, when Job asks why he's been made to suffer, despite being righteous, to which God demonstrates the gap in their knowledge, reminding Job that due to this, he cannot possibly understand the plan. Ezra in this instance actually shows a bit more resistance, and though he accepts he doesn't have the knowledge to understand why God does the things he does, he asks Uriel to explain it to him. However, Uriel tells him that he cannot, because he does not know it himself. Ezra is adamant to get some form of answer, and the more he converses with the angel, the more he wishes to know. He begins to ask about the end times, but is still not given a direct answer. It appears Archangel Uriel does take some pity on Ezra, and perhaps appreciates his desire to find out the truth. Either that or he just gets straight up annoyed by him, and wishes to shut him up, for he agrees to show Ezra in part the answer to some of his questions. We are told, I prayed and said, May I live, thinkest thou, until that time, or what shall happen in those days? He answered me, and said, As for the tokens whereof thou askest me, I may tell thee of them in part, but as touching thy life, I am not sent to show thee, for I do not know it. The vision that Archangel Uriel gives to Ezra is quite a vivid one, one that only furthermore troubles Ezra thereafter. It seems that the more he learns about the plan of God, the more he is marvelled, and the more questions he ends up having because of it. Archangel Uriel tells him in this vision that the fate of the unrighteous will suffer as they near the end times, as well as describing some signs of that which signifies the end. He tells us iniquity will be increased, blood will come out of wood, rocks will give voice, fish will make noises, women will give birth to monsters, and ferns will turn upon one another. He finally ends his vision by telling Ezra that if he is to pray, weep and fast after hearing this revelation, then he will be rewarded with an even greater vision. Seeming to be an addict for answers, Ezra does exactly that. In the next few chapters, Ezra receives several visions from the Archangel Uriel, and after each vision, Uriel explains to him what they mean, but leaves him just curious enough to keep him guessing. Most of these visions pertain to the end times, but also includes some answers to Ezra's questions, including why the Israelites do not rule the world, given that they were God's favourites and the most loyal. It is in chapter 7 where Ezra begins to realise that he cannot understand God's plan, nor how God works, because as a mere man, such things are inconceivable. He begins to realise that the Lord is merciful, and that this is the reason why the sinners are allowed to live their lives, so that God can be seen to be as merciful as he claims to be allowing those who do wrong to make amends. By chapter 8, Ezra is praised by the Archangel Uriel for not letting such wisdom go to his head, and for not becoming arrogant with the information that has been bestowed upon him. Uriel promises that should he remain this way, he will be saved for his righteousness, and for his humbling in the realisation that God's plan far exceeds his understanding, and always will. Ezra continues to have dreams and visions, to which are explained to him by both Archangel Uriel and God himself. This literally goes on and on and on for another six chapters, where in a roundabout way of speaking, Ezra gains more wisdom about God and the world than he could have ever dreamed about, none of which he chooses to disclose with us, by the way. We are told that he and five other men are also given visions and a vast understanding of the world, which they write about in 204 books. By the end of chapter 14, Ezra is advised by God, And it came to pass, when the forty days were filled, that the highest spoke, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish openly, that the worthy and the unworthy may read it. But keep the seventy last, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. And I did so. See how selfish this guy is? In any case, before I go any more off track, I implore you to give the books of Esdras a read, and see for yourself anything that I may have missed in regards to Archangel Uriel. 
But getting back to the Archangel himself, we see him in this text as more of an interpreter, perhaps a role more suited to that of Archangel Gabriel, given his prowess in, well, delivering messages. We aren't given a physical description of Uriel, nor any unique characteristics about him, nor any real sense that he is anything other than a voice speaking to Ezra. Through this, the role of Uriel is only mystified further, although some see him as the Archangel of Wisdom, given that he is able to paint some colourful metaphors for Ezra whilst discussing some complex ideas. It is also he who is responsible for opening Ezra's eyes to the bigger picture at work. Archangel Uriel is often depicted in various apocryphal gospels, where he has a varying degree of importance. In one of his roles, he is thought to rescue John the Baptist and his mother Elizabeth from the Massacre of Innocents, a biblical event which sees King Herod murder all of the babies in Bethlehem in an attempt to vanquish Jesus. Other depictions of Archangel Uriel see him as a god at the gates of Eden, where he wields a fiery sword. Meanwhile, in the Apocalypse of Peter, an early 2nd century Christian text that sees Peter receive revelations of heaven, hell and the end times, Archangel Uriel appears as the entity responsible for the overseeing of the resurrection of the dead. We are told, And soul and spirit shall the great Uriel give them at the commandment of God. For him hath God set over the rising again of the dead at the day of judgment. In the same text, Peter tells us of how God will scorch the world in the end times, and flood the world with a raging fire, that which will consume all of the sinners and the unrighteous. While the elect and the righteous will be led to the east, or to some kind of haven, those that have worshipped false gods will be routed out by Archangel Uriel and brought forth to face the fires and vengeance of God. As we are told here, Uriel the angel of God shall bring forth the souls of those sinners who perished in the flood, and of all that dwelt in idols, in every molten image, in every object of love, and in pictures and of those that dwell on all hills, and in stones, and by the wayside, whom men call gods, they shall burn with them in everlasting fire, and after that all of them with their dwelling places are destroyed, they shall be punished eternally." He is also attributed as working alongside the angel Ezrael, who serves as a tormentor of those who are cast into hell. Here Peter tells us of the horrifying fate that awaits those that are sent here, in that they suffer hanging by their tongues or hair, tossed from cliffs repeatedly, or made to drown in a river made of fire. The fact that Uriel serves alongside Ezrael gives us a look into another side of the Archangel, one that is vengeful, hateful, and perhaps even a little malignant, in that he shows no hesitation in the joining in with the torturing of mankind. He is perhaps one of the only Archangels from the Big Four who are noted as having this sort of wicked streak in him. For not only does he point out the unrighteous to God, but also takes it upon himself to drop the sinners into the fiery lakes of hell. Peter confirms this by telling us, Ezrael, the angel of God, shall bring them forth out of this fire and establish a judgment of decision. This then is their judgment. A river of fire shall flow, and all judgment shall be drawn down into the middle of the river, and Uriel shall set them there. Another apocryphal text, this one from Jewish literature, comes in the form of the life of Adam and Eve, otherwise known as the Apocalypse of Moses, and briefly features Uriel alongside Michael. The pair are given the duty by God to dress the bodies of Adam and his son Abel in clothes of linen, and then to bury them. The angels then tell Eve and Seth that they should bury their dead in a similar manner. Perhaps one of Uriel's biggest mentions in religious text comes from the Hebraic apocalyptic book known as Enoch. Enoch, an ancestor of Noah, tells us about the Watchers, a group of angels who descend upon earth in the pre-flood times, and against God's intentions, begin to mate with the mortal women. These women give birth to monsters, or giants, known as the Nephilim, and the Nephilim are thought to terrorise the world, bringing about calamity and destruction. The Watchers, namely one of the chiefs known as Azazel, teaches mankind about warfare and how to use weapons, and this sees the world turn into a bloodbath of chaos. Seeing this unfold, we are told that the Archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael and Uriel report to God about what is happening. By chapter 10, each Archangel is then given a task by God, to bring order to the unruly world. 
Uriel's task is to find Noah and to explain to him that the world is about to be met by a flood which will cleanse the earth and that everything will be destroyed. God tells Uriel to ensure that Noah knows how to escape. The passage reads, The Most High, the Great and the Holy One spoke and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, saying, Say to him my name, conceal yourself. Then explain to him the consummation which is about to take place. For all the earth shall perish, the waters of a deluge shall come over the whole earth, and all things which are in it shall be destroyed. And now teach him how he may escape, and how his seed may remain in all the earth. As the story goes on, the Nephilim are destroyed by the archangels, and the watchers are imprisoned after having their fate told to them by Enoch himself. Enoch finds himself to be a conduit between the watchers and God, and soon earns God's favour for his services in this matter. He's risen up to the heavens and is treated to exploring the many layers of the eternal realm. Here we are told he is guided through these layers by the archangel Uriel, and Uriel becomes something of a tour guide for him, detailing each layer to him. In chapter 19, we see Uriel guide Enoch through the prisons of heaven, where we learn the location and fate of the Watchers. We are told, Here the angels who cohabited with women, appointed their leaders, and being numerous in appearance, made men profane, and caused them to err, so that they sacrificed to devils as to gods. For in the great day there shall be a judgment, with which they shall be judged, until they are consumed, and their wives also shall be judged who led astray the angels of heaven that they might salute them. Chapters 21 of Enoch also sees Uriel lead Enoch to a desolate spot in heaven that serves as a prison or a binding for seven entities described as stars. Enoch is curious as to what these stars are or what they represent, to which Uriel explains, These are those of the stars which have transgressed the commandment of the Most High God and are here bound until the infinite number of the days of their crimes be completed. The chapter ends with Uriel taking Enoch to another prison in heaven, that which is described as a great blazing fire, with burning columns that descend into the darkness, all the way into the abyss. Enoch tells us that this particular place is a terrible one, and Uriel confirms this, telling him, This, he said, is the prison of the angels, and here they are kept forever. By chapter 26, Uriel takes Enoch back to earth and shows him a valley amongst a beautiful landscape, but that the valley itself was barren. Enoch queries as to what the significance of this place is, to which Archangel Uriel explains, This valley is the accursed of the accursed forever. Here shall be collected all who utter with their mouths unbecoming language against God, and speak harsh things of his glory. Here shall they be collected. Here shall be their territory. You might say that this links in quite well with the accounts from the Apocalypse of Peter, where we are told that Uriel is actually responsible for the gathering of lost souls and the unrighteous, so that he might present them for the cleansing of fire by the hand of God. You might also say that this is where Uriel gathers the sinners in the end days, from which he descends into hell and drops them into the lakes of fire. Today, however, many believe Archangel Uriel to be an angel of wisdom, one who gives people both inspiration and motivation to live righteously. Many believers see Uriel as one who brings God's wisdom into their lives, and may visit one to deliver new insights and assistance. It is thought that Uriel helps one to achieve a higher connection with God, and will guide them through major decisions, similar to how he guides Enoch through the heavens. He is also thought to give intuition, and will help you develop a potential psychic link with God and the higher realm by delivering visions and dreams. Ultimately, Uriel is an archangel which many call upon when stuck in a creative rut, or may need some help in getting motivated to complete a task. Uriel is also thought to be called upon by those who have lost some self-respect, or may need some confidence after suffering some ordeal or some unfavorable circumstance. Uriel can empower those that are suffering and give them back value in their lives. Some believe that the Archangel Uriel manifests through electricity itself, perhaps a metaphoric sign of him giving life to something, as he does with the human conscience. He is also thought to be present on Earth during thunderstorms, where he is channeled by the lightning in the sky. Uriel is also thought to represent and appear in a ray of red light. 
Through this ray, he is able to help believers make decisions and process difficult emotions. He also encourages believers to help each other, for he believes that true richness comes in the form of generosity and goodwill, as well as being something that God will look favourably upon. But what stories about Archangel Uriel do you have? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Until the next time guys.